said we are in a series that we've called relational rescue and listen the heart behind this series is just simply this i've really believed through my time serving in ministry full time even before hope city that one of the greatest determinants of how you walk after this faith is based on the relationships you keep around you it ain't your church attendance it's not church attendance. It's not whatever you do for God. But a lot of times, the people that we have in our lives affect how far we go. And you know this, right? You know this just doing life. In school, uh, your results in exams were probably a good reflection of the people you have around you. If you was part of that class, clung in, come on. You know your grades was a joke too. But we know this in life in every area. Like we know, we understand this. Like the people that you keep around you, man, that affects our walk with God. One of the things that we, and so what we've just tried to do is just bring back, bring back to the place some of the core principles as believers that God calls us to walk in. In how we would love and serve each other. And so we've gone through some topics here that may sound simple. But today's topic and, the way, and one of them that I think is so essential for us. It is forgiveness. Yeah, I know it get, get heavy one time. If you are to walk and live the way that God has called you to, especially in the relationships that God has placed around your life. You and I have to know how to forgive. Alright, so we got a few amens there. Let me go further. You and I have to learn how to ask for forgiveness. My hope today is that you would leave here with just this one bit of hope. Hurting hearts can still heal. That whatever you've been through, whatever you have walked through, painful as it may have been, that God still has healing. He still has the ability to heal our deepest pain. Amen? But here's the challenge that we have today and that we're going to hopefully walk through. Many of us have lived with so, some sort of brokenness in this area something people have done to us said to us said about us that we've lived with it for so long that we've built lives around this dysfunctional way of living in other words your unresolved tension in your relationships affect your relationships today let me push it further or maybe that's the reason you have the inability to connect with others because you have held on to something that someone has done and we are not trying to belittle what people have gone through are you with me but we come to glorify what god has done and because of what he's done what we can do today which is to release forgiveness come on there's hope today man it could be a heavy topic, but I love the fact that we serve a great and mighty God. All right, yeah, I, I feel like I don't know if I'm in a church here right now. Because I, I thank you. Somebody got to recognize we still serve a great and mighty God. If I said, you know, we serve a great and mighty God to meet our needs, we shout and we want to hear that God. But he's so great and mighty that he could change our hardened hearts. As a matter of fact, that's probably a bigger miracle than the things you're praying for right now. You see, you're pulling out here. You should have just respond good before, man. <laughs> but here's, the, here's why I'm so passionate about this. Forgiveness is the substance of our faith, man. Everything that we profess that we believe about who Jesus is, what God has done, boils down to the essential part. We are forgiven. 
for those who place our faith in Jesus Christ. Our very faith is built around forgiveness. Every other religion says you've got to do good enough, live a certain way, that you can earn your way to righteousness. But every single one of us knows that we can never attain righteousness and holiness of our true and living God. And so our faith is in what Jesus has done so that we are forgiven based on his righteousness. So let's go back to basics, right? Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. They disobeyed God. They brought sin into the world. God couldn't just forgive them right there and then. Why, is, why not? He's not just a merciful God, but he's also a just God. And so if the penalty of sin is death, somebody had to die. Because if he just forgave us of our sins without any consequences or fulfillment of what that sin deserved, he would no longer be just. Man, our entire faith is built on the good work and the good news of what Jesus did for us. That we can stand in confidence that we are now forgiven. God is merciful, but he remains just. And that's where he, he sent his son Christ to die for us. Man, I, I want to tell you, everything that we profess and believe, is grounded on the fact that we are forgiven because of what Christ has done. And if our faith is lived and believed through such revelation, how much more we who profess Jesus Christ should be forgiving others. God demonstrated his love first where he sent his son. The Bible says even while we were his enemies. Come on. God took the first step in reaching into mankind to save us. Christ was even obedient, even obedient to death on the cross. So how much more for those of us who are called to follow and become more like him, how much more are we called to forgive? Hmm. You see, I think when we, when we, Hold that unforgiveness or we refuse to forgive or even open the conversation to do that. We are rejecting the very thing that Christ has done for us. Hmm. The mark of Christians should be marked more than in anything in the way that we forgive, man. Come on. That is what we hold on to and claim. And if we have to be like him, should we not practice what we have been blessed with? And we know this to be true because God himself instructs us through his words. Colossians chapter 3 verse 12 to 13. So as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Come on, they're describing how children of God should look. Hmm. Verse 13, bearing with one another and doing what? Forgiving each other. Whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so must you do also. It's not an option. Oh, let me say it again. It's not an option. If you believe the Bible to be God's word without error, then the only choice we have is if we will be obedient or not. So if we are still struggling and currently have unforgiveness in our heart, can we submit to the fact that we're not walking in God's word? Listen, I'm not trying to say it's easy or anything like that. We didn't reach there on how we do it. But we got to be honest with ourselves that if it is we are walking in unforgiveness in any area of our life, we are walking in disobedience to his word. So my call and my appeal to us today 
I know this is a heavy topic because it deals with a lot of pain that some of us have been through that I cannot even probably begin to understand your story. And I'm not trying to pretend or minimize what you've gone through. But I've always come with this approach. I will glorify that we serve a risen and powerful and a God of the impossible. That even the worst in our lives, he is able to make it beautiful. And the only call that I have for us this, this morning is because I, I get this straight. On a topic like this, no preaching is going to change your heart. No words, no arguments I can present to you. So I am calling on the profession of your faith. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, to obey what our Lord says. So that way I have no pressure how good I preach or how not so good I preach. I ain't really, I just going to state it. So if you got your notes with you, the worship guide, the first thing I want you to take note of, and I'm calling our church, our community, those online as well, focus on obedience over outcomes. Focus on obedience over outcomes. You see, when we think of forgiveness, most times our hearts and our mind goes to the other person. And we start to, we all do this as people. We, we start to think about if I go and ask for forgiveness or I go and tell them I forgive them, we think about their response first. And if you're like me, when I think of some of the people who have done me wrong, the, the challenge I have in my heart and my mind is if I go and forgive them, it will be little what they've done to me. Anybody think like that? And so you don't want to let them off the hook so easy. And we find nice ways to justify it. But what if they go and hurt somebody else that way? Focus on obedience over the outcome. That as followers of Jesus Christ, we will obey his word and leave the rest in his hands. So, you thinking about someone that you know, you didn't have it so right with. You didn't leave on good terms. Whether it's a job, whatever. A family event. Because you all know family could rub you the wrong way. Hey! Ole. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, good. I love it. I love it. Whoever it is, when we think about doing what God has says, it's difficult sometimes because, let's be honest, our human nature, we want justice still. We want justice. Let's be honest. Someone has done wrong to us. Yeah, we want that justice. We always wait for feelings to lead. The biggest problem, even within the church that we've adapted from the world, is that we wait to see how we feel first before we take action. I am praying for this community. Let choices lead, then feelings follow. Choices lead, feelings follow. We choose to do what is right and be obedient to God. And I promise you the feelings come after. We are not called to live by how we feel. But we are called as followers of Jesus Christ to live in obedience to his word. Even and especially when it doesn't feel good. Jay, you're preaching much better than they're responding. Don't worry about that. I go bless myself this morning. Listen. Listen. Hey, he went in quick, boy. My boy. Listen. I, I just was joking with you all. I know sometimes you're reflecting, whatever. I just had to make you all laugh a little bit just to cut the air a little bit. So the question is, let's be honest. We... 
How many of us have some enemies in our lives? Amen? You got some people against you, speaking against some in some form or fashion. So the question this morning, because I want to be real practical this morning. The word is clear. We are called to forgive. Amen? So I want to try and bring it to smaller steps on how do we do that. So how do we love our enemies? Luke chapter 6 verse 27 to 28. It's in your notes. Team will have it up. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies. Hmm. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who are abusive to you. Ouch. Amen. Lord I had. Our best response is, Lord, help us. Come on. That's the words of the Savior that we profess, that we've given our lives to. Y'all know when you pray them nice sounding prayers, but you didn't really know what you're saying? Lord, not my will, but thy will. Thy is will there. Woo! So the first thing I want you to do, we go, let's go and take it it's straight from the word. How are we going to love our enemies? How we as a church, as a community, as a body of believers are going to love those who have hated us, who have done evil against us. We're going to do good for them. That's your first point. Because that's what the word said. He said, love your enemies and then he tells us what to do. Do good to those who hate you. Check how amazing this is though. Jesus so know how we could argue ourselves out of it, right? In a few verses later, verse 35, he repeats his instruction. But love your enemies and do good. And here's what he says. And lend expecting nothing in return and your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the Most High. For he himself is kind to ungrateful and evil people. You know who he's talking about there? Us. You're thinking about the person who's doing evil against you. No. We are the evil and ungrateful people. Because if he first loved us, that's how we are able to love others. So, how do you do good? And I love that he gave them a practical thing. In their culture, lending and borrowing money was a natural way of living. So when you read about servants in the Bible, guess what? They're not always slaves like they were conquered. Because someone would go into debt for someone, they would become a servant to pay off their debt. It was a normal thing. So Jesus is saying, listen, to your enemies, when they come asking, lend them and don't expect it back in return. So I ain't going to tell her, give your money away to anybody. But here the principle in it. Because so, here's what I do understand. I am saying to a group of individuals here, and those online, do good to your enemies. But that, there is no one formula that fits every person's story. Let's be honest. That what, for someone who's been through abuse, doing good for that person, is still staying away from that person. What your good is, is going to look different for my scenario. So I am not here to try and put some sort of plaster for everyone to apply. But you, I know God will be speaking to you through this word. On what it means to do good to that person that you have been struggling with. But here's the principle. Paul speaks about it. And I'm going to just break it on real simple. Romans 12 verse 17 to 21. Never repay evil for evil to anyone. Respect what is right in the sight of all people. Listen to verse 18. This is a heavy call for Christians. If possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all people. All. 
everybody. Not the people they like. Let me say again, all people. I wonder if I'm just being clear enough. I love that God understands there are some people who will want no peace with you. But he says, as long as it is within your power, come on, live good, do good with all people. You know that there are some relationships in your life that you are the one keeping it away from being mended. Verse 19, never take your own revenge, beloved, but have room for the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Now verse 20 is something that, let's deal with this. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. For in doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Verse 21. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So if your enemy is hungry, what do you do? If they're thirsty, you give them something to drink. We need to correct some doctrinal error here. If you've been like me, when I read that verse, I used to do good to my enemies, hoping that judgment will come. <laughs> come now, man. You're, you're not, don't pretend like some of y'all ain't do that. God, how many of you pray? Calls a fire on the head. That's so far removed from what the scripture really means. One time that calls are mentioned on a person is when Isaiah got a glimpse of the glory of God. And his response was, woe is me, a man of what? Unclean. And then what was the call used for? To purify him. When we do good, to our enemies, it releases the power of God to do good in them, to purify them. How could God say love your enemies, but you only doing good to see their destruction? That could never be. Because all through Jesus' teaching, he is saying to love your enemies. You will not love somebody and want to see them destroyed. But here's the principle and the practical application. For those that you have been wronged by, where you know there's a struggle, how do you do good? You meet needs. The Bible was very simple in that. If they're hungry, you feed them. Now, not every person is in your sphere. Like they're not around your circle all the time. But if one of your enemies is in your sphere of influence, in your community, in your space still, and you see a need and you are able to be able to help them, your response as a believer is to do what? Meet that need. And by meeting the needs of those who are against us, by God's grace, and his sovereignty, maybe he will save more people. Hmm. You don't have to wait for the feelings. Because you know the truth is, you may never get the feeling to do good to, the, to your enemies. But when their need is before you, choose, choose to obey and do good for them. Just imagine what the church would look like if we practice this. Forget outside in the world right now. What would the church of Jesus Christ look like for the people that we have disagreements with if we could still love them the way Christ instructs us to? That even when they have a need, 
I know we don't agree here, brother or sister, but I saw you have this. I want to be a blessing to you. I love this woman. She says, you never so touch the ocean of God's love as when you forgive your enemies. Corey Ten Boom. Anybody know who that is? She's a survivor from the Nazi war. A Dutch woman whose father was a watchmaker. And when Nazi Germany invaded and was killing Jews, her family would take the Jews and try to hide them. And rescue them. And save lives. They were found out and she ended up in a concentration camp. So the woman who's talking about loving your enemies has seen probably more evil than any of us have. Hmm. There is something beautiful in being able to love those who seek evil against you. But to do, to do that, I think for many of us, we have to let go of our ego. We have to let go of the ego. But that's not a message, but... Listen, to, to be able to do good to those who've done us wrong, it begins with a choice. The choice if you will forgive. That means I'm not telling you that you have the power to actually do it. Because let's be honest. In a room this size and those online, there are probably some dark stories here. That some of us would not survive if it had happened to us. And I am not here to speak as if this is something easy to do. But the choice of obedience to say, God, some of us may need to pray this way. God, I hear your word. I want to forgive. But I don't know if I can. Help me. Come on. That's why I said at the beginning, the power of this message is nothing in what I deliver, but it is in the power of God to touch your heart and your mind, and not just to touch it, to convict it, or to, to reveal His word or His truth, but it is the power to change us, to be able to actually, not in word and, and just deeds that sometimes, but to truly love people Who've done us wrong. Only the power of God. Is able to do that. You all with me? And so. To do good. Starts with your choice. Are you going to forgive. That person. Second response Jesus tells us. Bless those. Who curse you. In verse 28 of Luke, bless those who curse you. So the second way that I want you to love on your enemies and to practice forgiveness is to bless them. To bless them. Now I've got to do some clearing up here with this. Because usually when we talk about blessing, we think about something. Like I'm blessed because, again, you can I'm blessed because I got the promotion. Like, I'm not down on that. You all understand what I'm saying? Like, in our thinking and even within the church, we've created something that blessed, to be blessed was tied to something. The Hebrew word most often translated blessed is bara, which, me, which can mean, listen to this, to praise, congratulate, or salute, and is even used to mean a curse. So the, when you bless someone, it's more in line with how you speak about them. I know, I know that I'll, hmm. When God bless his people in the Bible, let's say the father of the faith, Abraham, before he was Abraham, listen to how God blessed him before he got anything. Genesis 12, 1 to 3. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I will show you. And I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be 
a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you. And the one who curses you, I will curse. And in you, all families of the earth will be blessed. The way God spoke over him was his blessing. Abraham never lived to see that fulfillment. But he was already blessed. He saw parts of it start to come to... Come on, you're with me? But to bless someone starts with how we speak over them. Last week we looked at Noah. And, and what did we see? Noah blessed two of his children. And then what did he do? He cursed the grandson of his son who messed up and didn't honor him. Come on. Long before anything actually happened, there was a blessing pronounced and a curse. You may say that you have forgiven that person. You may say you've forgiven what they've done to you. But if you and I was to look at your life and how you speak about them, how you speak to them, or how you even just recall what happened between you and them, will we come to the conclusion that you bless them? You see, many of us, we create distance and space from people we've not forgiven. Hear what I'm saying? And we say because we don't have confrontation with them, that we forgive on them. Come on. But if God is speaking into your heart right now, how you speak about them really testifies on if you've truly forgiven them. I gave you this scripture last week and it's coming back again. James 3, 9, 12, 9 to 10. Talking about our tongue, with it we bless our Lord and Father, but with it we curse people. You have been made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come both blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, these things should not be this way. We cannot keep saying that we forgive on someone, yet we speak the worst about them. Come on, you with me? Man, this is, this, is a, this is a word for me up here as well. You ask my wife, when we were planting this church, there, was, there were lots of things done and said against us. From people close to us. And when, people would, when I would meet people and they asked me about them, you know what I chose to do? I would speak of the good. It wasn't just honor. It's because I had to keep my heart right. And I'm asking you to take, take, reflect, reflect, take note of how you speak about those people who've hurt you and be honest in your own heart. Have you truly forgiven them? Can you actually obey this word in loving them? And your practical way is how you speak about them. Amen. So when you have to speak about anyone and everyone, I'm not telling you to bluff or flatter anyone, but find the good in them if you have to say anything about them. And speak that which is blessing to them. Come on. Testify about what that person does good. What they've done well. And if you can't find anything, ask God. Come on. Our hurt, our ego blinds us. And let, let me caution you with something. And I learned this in the depths of a lot of betrayal and hurt in my own life. People who've been faithful to you for a long time, do not lose your love and respect for them in a season that they may have done wrong to you. 
Let me hit this in the area that I've recognized in this church that we have a lot of issues. So you see when it comes to your parents, you fall out with them in a certain season of your life, but they were still good to you for more times than they were not good. Come on. You can still speak good of them. You can still bless them. You can still do good for them. This is the practical way of how we are going to wrestle through what if we're going to obey God today. Amen? Come on, is this helping you? Final way that we love our enemies. Jesus says, pray for those who abuse you. So obviously, you all see, we just stay to the word, right? We're going to do good for them. We're going to bless them because that's what Jesus said. I mean, third one is we're going to pray for them. We're going to pray for them. There's a story, and if you've been in church, you know about it. It's the story of a guy named Job. And Job was righteous before God, and Satan wanted to test him. So the argument between God and Satan was simply this. Satan was saying to God that Job is only faithful because you've blessed him. You've, do, you've done good to him. You've, you've been well with him. And so the enemy was given permission to touch him in different areas of his life, but not take his life. And so he lost everything. Family, his wealth, everything. His health, he lost everything. Lost all his children in one day. Even his wife turned to him and said, why, why are you so foolish? Curse God and die. Because basically the argument, God, has, God hasn't been good to you. Job had some friends, right? And we all have friends like this. That while he's going through this, his friends come and, and basically tell him, Hey, you're going through this because you're sinning your life somewhere. Come on, you all with me? Sometimes we just go through things because we live in a fallen world. Sometimes we go through things because they're just evil in the hearts of men. It ain't, it ain't always so deep. I know you all want to over-spiritualize some things sometimes. Maybe it's just sometimes we sow the wrong seeds. Anyway, that's all right. Let me do it. Job has people that are close to him basically telling him, Hey, you going through this because you've done wrong. Listen to the scripture at the end of Job's life when God is restoring him. Job chapter 42, verse 10. The Lord also restored the fortunes of Job. Listen to when he prayed for his friends. And the Lord increased double all that Job had. So for some of y'all who've come from real charismatic backgrounds, that doesn't mean if you pray for your enemies, you're going to get double. Let me not read into the text, right? But the reality is, God started restoring and blessing him when he could pray for the very people who condemned him. Because forgiveness releases God's move in your life. Sometimes the thing that is being blocked in your life is because you will not let go. Look at how the word is stated there. God restored the fortunes of Job when he prayed for his friends. Come on, man. There's much more that God can do in our hearts and in our lives if we would get before him and pray for those who've done evil against us. And because I know the kind of church I deal with, let's clarify. <laughs> you ain't praying for God to judge and kill them and remove them from the face of the earth. You all know you can find our Psalms that will help you pray that, right? David was not no joker. 
David praying, don't wipe them out. Wipe out the entire generations, Lord. Wipe them off the face of the earth. I love that God could deal with our raw emotions like that. But when God says to pray for them, man, listen, if they that evil, pray for their salvation. Pray that God would bless them. Pray that God would heal them. Pray that God would forgive them. 1 Timothy 2.1 First of all, then I urge that requests, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made in behalf of all people. So let me, let me just break that down for you. The good, the bad, and the ugly relationships in your life, you call to pray for all of them. Come on. If we're going to be obedient to the word of God, then we got to confront these things. This series is relational rescue. We're learning how to live and build relationships in the integrity and the honesty of God's word. And as Christians, we have to forgive. And part of the way you know you're doing that is when you can pray for the very people who've done evil to you. I know it's hard. I'm not speaking down to you on this. It's still a challenge for me in my life. I, so I'm not pleased or ever hear or think that I've gotten all of this together. But I know I've walked through a lot of, some of this, of what I've preached here today, just walking through bringing this church to where it is today. And I promise you there's more freedom in our own hearts to obey God's word. You release the power of God in your own life when you obey Him, when you can love those who've done wrong, when you can do good for them, bless them, and pray for them. You see, prayer is connection with God. And let's, this is where this word changes direction in the sense of it is only your connection with God when you go before Him in prayer. And sometimes you don't even know how to pray for that person who's done you wrong. But the fact that you are bringing them in your prayer to obey God's word, man, God starts to work by His Spirit to change our hearts. There is no preacher, no sermon, no, no way of communicating that can do that. Only the power of God does. And so your choice today is, will I, will I obey his word? Jesus, the greatest example of such love. Luke 23 verse 34. Jesus is hanging on the cross. And surrounding him are the very people who've abused him, who've put him through a fake trial, an illegal case where they've condemned him with false testimonies. They are evil and they are wrong in every respect. And Jesus, while in the midst of the pain and the suffering, Jesus was saying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And while he's praying for them, they cast in lots, dividing his garments among themselves. I believe Jesus gives us the example. Stop excusing yourself from obeying God's word. That record and that, ex and that revelation of what Jesus did was while the wounds are open and still hurting. We try to disobey God's word by saying, I'll, when I get stronger, give me a little time. No. No. The word has been preached. It's for you to obey now. 
I love this a gentleman who been in this church just for a short while. Last week he heard a message on honor. And that very same day, he took an action to restore honor in a relationship in his life. That's what God calls us to. I am not the one to tell you that you're, you can rise above it. This is not a motivation. Because whatever has been done for you, you know. And if you were to tell me, I know, you can't even get over that. But there's a place that God is calling this church. And man, maybe you're not even part of this church, but God had you here for this message. For those joining us online. And he's calling us to a space. Where the word is telling you that you know it's not right with this brother or this sister. This family member, this co-worker. And even while it's still hurting. You're called to pray for them. You're called to forgive them. You're called to bless them. And it is only through the power of God. That's why our community met yesterday. And I told them, I want us praying for only one thing in this church right now. And that is for God's spirit to move. I, we ain't praying for connect groups. We ain't praying for leadership. We ain't praying for structure or programs. For the rest of this year, this church is seeking God for one thing and one thing only. That you would move on our hearts. You would give us the strength to do what you call us to do. I don't have the ability to forgive some of these people who are coming against us. But God, I say, not my will. But you're going to have, you're going to, have to accomplish that in my life. Because I can't do it. Anybody with me? You know what God's saying to you, but you know you don't have that strength. Today, God is speaking to us. But not just speaking. He's in this place. He's in this place. To do what He alone can do. That is not the work of any preacher or anything. It's the work of a loving God. Who's touching places in your heart. Because he loves you so much. And he's saying. For you to profess to be my son and my daughter. We got to address this. And your call is simply. To say yes to him. Focus on what? Obedience. Over the outcomes. I can't promise you that they will. Ask for your forgiveness. I can't promise you they will even want to hear you saying that you forgive them. But that don't matter. That don't matter. Do what God has called you to do. I've learned this in prayer. You won't ever wish evil for people you love. Not so? So if God says love your enemies, would you be praying for their destruction? That don't mean God don't deal with your enemies, you know, partner. But our heart response has to be to love them. Yes, even our parent who has done wrong, spoken those hurtful words. Because I know in this house, there's lots of hurting people. And some of you don't even have the chance to reconcile some of that. But today, you can't still release that unto God. I don't know how he's going to do it. But what I do know is, when he does it, you will testify. Look at what God has done. What should have destroyed me, God turned around to be my testimony. 
He is still so good. Amen. Charles Spurgeon says, It is well said that neglected prayer is the birthplace of all evil. And I want to use that in this point. The reason why you are harboring a lot of bitterness and ill feelings towards those who have hurt you is because you refuse to pray for them. That if you decided today, God, I don't know how, even if it's just to say, God, I just obey in you, bless them. Come on. Come on. I promise you, he could work with that. But you have to decide today. Come on, are we going to be a church? I will obey him. God's power to do this. God put a heart in us to help us obey you. Remember this. Choices lead. Feelings follow. Choose today to obey God's will. Forgive those persons in your life and leave the emotions and the restoration to your good, good shepherd. He leads you by still waters and he restores your soul. God's not done with you yet. I said he's not done with you yet. I came to say if you've got breath in you, there's still hope. And I want to declare over your lives wherever this word is meeting you that your best is still ahead of you. You all know I ain't no prosperity preacher. But your best is ahead of you because you will release the shackles of unforgiveness and walk in newness and a new walk in new power with your God. And the mountains that are before you will be brought low. Because he is able. I'm believing for restoration in this house. By the power of my God. So your application. Yes. This is the most important part of the service, you know. Because we are being a church that are not hearers of the word, but. So your application. Make the move today to loving your enemies. So unblock them. <laughs> Boom! Shots fired. <laughs> unblock them and send the first message. I said unblock them and send the first message. And the first message is not that I know you're sensitive and you might have taken what I said in the wrong way. Error! The message starts with, I am sorry. Woo. Hey, we, we ain't come to mess around here, you know. I love you too much to let you just feel good about a message. But I love you enough to put the hope before you that God is moving and working in your life right now. But you don't just leave here with that as enough. You got to take this step. So today, you're going to send that message. Romans 5.10 and I'll tell you where I get it from. For if while we were enemies... We were reconciled to God through the death of his son. Much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only this, but we also celebrate in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. So you want to know what I'm talking about here? Our people just make fun of me when one sleep up, one sleep down. And they take pictures and mess with me. So, sorry. See all his real mess with me. I know here it is. But I do that just to break the heaviness. The scripture says, while we were his enemies, 
Jesus was sent to die for us. So when I say, take the first step, I'm asking you to be like Jesus. You say you love him. You say you follow him. You say you want to be like him. So be like him, yeah. Take the first step. So I'm so serious about this week. This is why Christ made the first move for us. While we were what? His enemies. That's why I will make the first move. Y'all with me? God is so good, amen? That he brought you here because he's doing a work in you. Come on. He didn't leave you where you were. I know you think somebody dragged you to church. No. It was God's spirit that brought you here. Those who are online, they say no by no chance. Because God wants to touch the area that has caused you to stumble the most. How could we serve our God, celebrate his forgiveness, and we will not forgive? God loves you so much that he's been a rest in your heart all through this word, even before you came in here. He's been giving you the signs. He's been giving you the reminders. And he just wanted me to fire the last shot. But we're going to obey him, amen? I know we normally pray here, but I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet. And if you feel like God has been speaking to you, see, I feel like it's not just in our mind, but we're going to take action. So as I pray, if God's been speaking to you to give up on something that you've held on in a relationship with, just do the posture that he works best with. God, I surrender. So if that's you, just do that while we pray. Father, I thank you, oh God. Thank you for your amazing love. I lift my hands to you, God. Because there are areas I'm still struggling with to let go of, God. God, where the pain, the hurt is still in front of me, God. And it's difficult to love them. It's difficult to bless them. God, I don't want to do good to them, Lord. But God, I love you more. And I reserve the right to keep that against them. So today, God, I'm asking you for my life and for everyone who has their hands lifted, oh God. Father, give us the ability to love our enemies. Give us the ability to forgive those who've hurt us and done wrong against us. Father, not in a shallow way, but a deep walk through our hearts, God. Move mightily in our hearts and in our minds in our souls oh god where these people have destroyed parts of us god we are pulling down the walls to say holy spirit have your way in us that god we can truly say like you did that we will love our enemies we'll forgive them oh god and we'll even go as far to pray and to bless them god make us a church that represents the forgiveness that we have in you by the way we forgive one another, Lord. I pray for every life that has been convicted today that they don't just feel the weight, but they, feel, they, they experience your freedom right now, God. That chains are being broken. From years ago, God, from abuse, from betrayal, from whatever they've walked through, oh God, even violent crimes like rape and domestic violence god you have the ability to heal hearts god so god all we say is yes to you we don't know how you're going to do it but we say yes we will obey your voice oh god because even in the darkness even in the brokenness you still good to us god and today will be the day that we proclaim who our god is by the way we love by the way we forgive by the way that we overcome everything that has been done against us we are more than overcomers in Christ Jesus so God heal us 
Restore us. Strengthen us. Forgive us, oh God, where we've gotten this wrong. But today is the day that we release and close the door to our past. Right now, for every hand that is raised, for every life that is bare before you, I ask you, Holy Spirit, invade our lives. Give us the power to do and to obey your word, oh God, and become more like our Savior, Christ Jesus. I thank you today, oh God. I give you praise. Let all God's people say yes and amen. Give God some praise.